black folks will leverage in the position that they are in, but the problem is they're not they're not responding correctly. And they like what the brother said, that they're dreaming and they're caught up in this whining situation and they're not right. taking action. Given this history, you'd think that we'd be pissed. It's like look at our communities today. How did this happen? Um, like, for instance, I'm going to give you an example, not to just talk so much, but this let me just to tell you, because of some of the stuff that I do in dealing with these interviews, I did an interview once with some cats, and I was talking about um, Mumia, and they were pissed. It was, you know, a bunch of white boys, you know. And, and you know, they were like, well, I bet you support Mumia Abu-Jamal. And, and I said, yes, I do, but probably not for the reasons that you think. And uh, because this was, for the, this was when the, F, the Fraternal Order of Police was going after Rage Against the Machine. I don't know if you know if that, what that group. It's a white, well, they're not really white. Mm-hmm. They're mixed because Zach is Mexican right. and Tom is half black. And they're all like, they're mostly, you know, they're mixed Mexican and black and a little bit of white, you know. But anyway, um, they're real revolutionary. And they had a concert in Giant Stadium in New York. And um, the FOP came down on them hardcore. So... Um, Zach was asking, you know, brother, you know, listen, man, you know, I know you got all those guns, blah, blah, blah. I mean, would appreciate it if you could come out to the giant stadium and give me backup because these FOP people are sending, there's people calling us up telling they're going to kill us, they're going to shoot us, and your license can come out. So I went with uh, my boy Paul, uh, Jelani knows him, and we went out there to, to back them up. And, um, you know, this, this was really contentious. So afterwards, I did an interview with some of those cats, the FOP people, and we were talking about, you know, Mamiya and all this. And so the cop says to me, yeah, you'll probably support Mamiya Boudoumal. You probably said yes, but not for the reasons that you think. You see, the United States, upon the, um, the construction of the COINTELPRO program, that that was, you can consider that a formal declaration of war against the, its own people black Americans, because it resulted in the death of a number of black people, like Fred Hampton, who was executed while he was in his bed, right? Mm -hmm. So I said that that anybody who, you know, who killed during this phase when COINTELPRO was still in effect is literally, it's just a soldier. So let's say Mumia shot that cop, and let's say he killed him. Then Mamiya is a soldier for the cause, you see, and that's why I support Mamiya because given the same set of circumstances, I'm telling this to a cop. I'd shoot you in a second, just like you'd shoot me. We have a really good understanding. You're armed, I'm armed. You kill me, I'll kill you. It's plain and simple that your forefathers, these white people that came here and took this country, came over here and snatched it from underneath the Native American. Didn't think anything about it. They took it and they committed genocide to do it. Now, the thing is, is that what you're basically sitting here and telling me is, is that black people have no right to self-determination. So it's the same thing that the king told you when your ancestors came here and you said you had a right to self-determination and to build a nation for yourself. And they said, no, you have to be under the, the domination of England. And then you fought the British. I said, did you use spitballs and water pistols? I said, this is the only country that has rockets and bombs in their national anthem. So you're basically telling me as a black man that we're supposed to just sit up and take everything that white people have to do, declare war against my people, my community, bring us over here in slave ships, and we're not supposed to fight back. Do you know that white boy just sat there just looking at me? <laughs> he didn't say anything. He was fuming. And I said, I said, you know, I saw this movie, and at the time, the movie Braveheart had just come out, right? Mm-hmm. So I said, so basically, like at the end of the movie Braveheart, and I said, which I love. So Mel Gibson, at the end, they pulling the guy's guts out, and he does not yield to the authority of, you know, the king. He literally defies Longshanks in his dying breath at the movie and screams, freedom! And so we're not supposed to do that. I says, what about Patrick Henry? He says, give me liberty or give me death, so we're not supposed to do that too as black folks? Right. So we're supposed to just oh, live yeah. under That's your part boot. of their propaganda, too. They use the movies to propagate their revolutionary spirit. White nationalism is being promoted under the guise of a revolutionary spirit. When we do it, it's insurgency, rebellion, and, and, right. and you know, and some chaotic. You, you mean, you know, the thing about the COINTEL program, could you imagine? I, who's to say it is? I mean, and of course it hasn't ended. I mean, I don't know what they 
fought, um, you know, what was the what was the expiration date for COINTEL? COINTEL is still going on today. They're using uh, hip hop. They silenced Muhammad Ali. When I looked at Muhammad Ali, you're looking at the most uh, um, charismatic uh, personality I think that I, I, I think we have seen since we've been to this country. I've never mm-hmm. seen a guy. Every time I see Muhammad Ali, I feel like I'm looking at like what what date is this? This feel like this guy is talking today. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and they silenced him. He now, the voice that he would have had, he doesn't have. He can't speak out on these issues. You know, they use the hip-hop against us. Like you said, the planning, I mean, could you imagine the planning that went in to go, meticulously going over, I mean, the behavioral scientists involved, the, the, everybody, the, the, uh, all the machinery that's involved in maintaining the lock that they have on our people. I mean, right. it, 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 it's incredible. Yeah, but we let it happen. I mean, you know, you notice that we never use this war argument. I mean, some of the Panthers tried, but the, the United States had declared a, it was a declaration of war against the... Um, well, we let it happen because of the religious, because of the, because of the Christian... See, the Islamic dudes could do the... They can go... Again, that's what makes, what makes what, they, what they're doing such a political tool against the system in terms of from then. They use their religion as a tool. In their religion, it says fight against the infidels. Kill them. In, in, in the religion that they gave us, it says, love your enemy, pray for those that, 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 that uh, persecute you. And our, you know, and our leaders prop that religion up as the, as the, as the model, as the, as the moral compass in which they're going to move. You can't move, you can't be a revolutionary with no damn Christianity. I mean, even Bob Marley said, you know, how long will they kill us our prophets while we stand around and look? I'm telling you right now, in my faith, I'm the head minister. If I get taken out and none of my people do anything about it, I'm going to tell my ancestors to kill them and kill their families. Because any anybody, first of all, black people have been here millions of years. Millions. Okay, so we don't have to make an excuse for our existence. White people, you know, they're a descendant of us, or however you want to put that. But, you know, they have a philosophy that everybody's here at their pleasure or at their leisure or at their mercy. And really, for myself, I, I'm not going to sit here and 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 justify my reason for existence. Right. You know, my, in, in, in my opinion, it's like this: if you want to live, then live; if you want to die, then die. You know, but for me, it's like if you have if you have a faith or you have a philosophy, you know, life is about survival. That's the first religion you're born with. If you're not willing to do what it takes to survive, just shut the fuck up. Pardon my expression. I mean, you know, and a lot of people will say, you know, well, you know, ministers shouldn't talk like that. But this is, you know, this is about life. And and we got to get real about living. Otherwise, we're sitting around here being cheap, waiting to get slaughtered, and we want to complain about it. Cal Remember the Shawshank Redemption? What was that line? Right. You either get busy living or get busy dying. Get That's busy it. dying. Right. And so if, you, if you're not willing to protect yourself, your family, the things that you care about, then no one else is going to respect you. Okay, I mean, you know, they had to respect the Viet, the, the Viet Cong because the Viet Cong was willing to do everything they was willing to do and beyond. Because the Viet, Viet Cong was like, you're not going to come over here and play as suckers. I don't care about what they did to us in slavery. I don't care about all that type of stuff. I'm saying right now, okay, right now I want to live. I want my kids to live. I want my friends, family, loved ones, and I want my faith to live. So if you want to come over and do something to me to counter that, well, guess what? In my opinion, it's better to be judged by 12 than carried by 6. Oh, well, they don't want, they discourage that kind of, because that mentality is the mentality, that's the only thing. It's funny, when you was, when I first came on the, on the, on the air, uh, Aton was quoting Charles Heston. I quoted him, he said, from my cold, dead hands, mm-hmm. as he holds the, the rifle up, you're not going to get this gun from me, I don't give a shit what law you try to pass. I'm keeping this gun, or I'm going to kill you with this same gun. That's what he was saying right. to whoever. I, I, I think a brother had said that, you know, we're all going to die, and that's true. All death is certain. You know, we all come in here on our way out. It's, you know, that that's a fact. Yeah. But it's how, you, it's how you live. It's what you do with your life. Now, I'm not saying be violence for violence's sake. I'm not saying let that be your, your first hand. But what I'm saying is they try to do violence on you. And you do Are they going to? You to survive. Yeah, this they, man, got us, you know, they got I, I, our people. They got our people mentally trapped in this physical realm. Mm-hmm. That's right. why they're terrified of death. Right. And they tricked they're us mentally, into that. Yeah, they're mentally trapped in this physical realm. Because when you, I told, um, I think me and Jelani was talking. I told Jelani, do you realize if let's say a meteor came and hit this planet and the and it was a fiery ball for a million years, 
with no life on it. Do you know what life form is going to develop first? It's going to be a black person. That's it. Oh, we don't go nowhere. So, so, in, so, in, so, in, so when you think about it on that from that perspective, what the fuck are you scared about? 